Yeah. Well, here we are again, guys. We are going to do Daniel chapter 4 today. We're only going to do half of Daniel chapter 4. I'm taking the slow route through these stories. I think that that's going to serve us well in the long run. Daniel chapter 4 is a very odd chapter in the Bible, I think. I think it's cool. It tells a great story, but there's something special about it that I think is pretty neat and fun to interact with. And, it, and one of the things that I think is so cool about it is going to show up in the first few uh, verses. So we're going to look at that. So I will get my screen share, a screen sharing. Now, the last uh, story that we looked at was uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being cast to the fiery furnace, and the fourth person shows up. And this is so impressive to King Nebuchadnezzar that he says that there is no other God that is able to deliver after this sort. And so that's something that's pretty neat, that the foreign king, the foreigner and the foreign king and foreign ruler thinks that God is really, really cool. And so the beginning of chapter four is not going to have, we're not going to have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in this. It's going to be Daniel again, but it's absolutely going to have King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, the book of Daniel, it isn't only about Nebuchadnezzar, but Nebuchadnezzar is one of the most important people in the whole book. So we're going to start here in chapter four. Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all peoples, uh, nations, and languages that dwell on the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. Wait, what does that sentence mean? Nebuchadnezzar the king to all the peoples, peace be multiplied to you. Nebuchadnezzar, I think is just saying, I hope everybody, being, or, like, who is I saying it? Peaceful for you. Nebuchadnezzar is. Nebuchadnezzar is the one saying it. This is the way that New Testament letters begin. Paul to the church in Corinth. So this is from... Nebuchadnezzar, and it's to, unto whom? All the people's nations and languages. To well the All the nations and languages. So Daniel chapter 4 in the Bible is written by whom? King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, he might not, I really think he did it. Now, he might not have been the one actually doing the handwriting. You know, you could pay somebody to do that. But a book of the Bible is by a foreign king. Isn't that interesting? It's not about a foreign king. Well, it is about him. But he is the guy that wrote it. This is really interesting. Why would God let somebody like him write a chapter in the Bible? Well, let's see. Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. Well, if he's offering peace, he's in a pretty good mood, don't you think? All right. Mm -hmm. It has seemed good to me to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God has wrought or done toward me. Who is Most High God? God. God, God. right? Now, in the Bible, we know that Most High God is God, but who's talking about it? It's Nebuchadnezzar. He lives in a land where there's lots of gods, not just any God, but the Most High God. This is a big deal. I'm going to tell you the signs and the wonders that the Most High God has done toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and dominion is from generation to generation he is talking about yahweh right he's talking about jehovah he's talking about god with a capital g as we call him right and he's saying that this God has done signs and wonders and he's done mighty things. And then what does he say about God's kingdom? What does he say because about God's it's kingdom? it's an everlasting kingdom. True. But here's the big hang up. God's kingdom was Jude, Jude and Jerusalem. 
And what did Nebuchadnezzar do to Judah and Jerusalem? He captured it. He captured it. Or conquered it. Yeah. He burned Jerusalem to the ground. Did he destroy God's temple? Yeah. Yeah. So this is an interesting little conundrum. He's really grown to like God and Jehovah. And he thinks that God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, even though Nebuchadnezzar burned it to the ground. So what, is he, what has he learned about God? Even if, the, even if he destroys the physical, God, like his physical place, God is still, God still exists. Yeah. This is an important lesson for all of us, don't you think? Nebuchadnezzar learned it. This chapter is going to be about how Nebuchadnezzar learned it. He's already been learning it, right? This chapter is going to really show him some of it. Okay, let's think about it. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. Well, you don't say. I saw a dream which made me afraid. I mean, how many dreams are going to be in this book? My word. The thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore, I made a decree to bring all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians and the enchanters and the Chaldeans and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make known to me the interpretation of it. So what did Nebuchadnezzar have? A dream. He had a dream. And how did that dream make him feel? Scared. Scared. He did not like it. He did not like his dream. And Remember in the other story, he would say, you have to tell me the dream. This time, he told the dream to all the soothsayers and the wise men, right? And were they able to tell him, oh, this is what your dream means. This is exactly what it means. Were they able to do that? No. No. Sorry, Mr. Nebuchadnezzar, we can't figure it out for you. So he's really stressed out about his dream. But at the last... Daniel came in before me. Okay, number one, why did he wait last to bring Daniel? You know, come on, Nebuchadnezzar. He should be first. Oh, but at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God. What do you think about that? Hmm. He still calls him Belteshazzar. Yeah. And in whom is the spirit of the holy gods? What does he know is in Daniel? The spirit of holy God, right? And I told him the dream before him saying, Oh, Belteshazzar, make a uh, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. He knows that inside Daniel, let's draw Daniel here. He's got a big nose still, I guess, because he ate a lot of food when he was a kid. And here's, here's Daniel, and he's just kind of hanging out there, and he's saying hi. But what's inside of Daniel? What do we know is inside of Daniel? The spirit of God. Spirit of God. And Nebuchadnezzar knows it, not just because Daniel is wearing a shirt that says spirit of God, but because Daniel has shown himself to be able to, to tell the things of God. I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubles you. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions upon my head, uh, visions of my head upon my bed. So if you want, you can draw Nebuchadnezzar in bed. Apparently he still sleeps at the crown because he's vain. And you can draw a blanket on him. And I don't know if they have beds like we do. Um, they didn't have Ikea back then. So I don't know if he got his bed from Ikea or not. <laughs> All right. So there he is. And he's dreaming. And then here comes his dream bubble. And he's about to tell it to Daniel. Okay. Now here's the thing. Nebuchadnezzar knows that the spirit of God is in Daniel. But he's still caught, and Jackie pointed this out, and I thought that that was a cool idea. 
he's still calling Daniel Belteshazzar after his own God, right? But when he's writing this chapter, he's calling him Daniel. So it's almost like when he first shows up, Belteshazzar, he calls him Belteshazzar at first, but it's almost like later on he decides, nope, I'm going to call him Daniel. I don't know if he does change it, but I, but I think that that's a neat change in the story. Okay, let's read it. I saw, and we'll draw this on the board, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached into heaven, and the sight thereof made all of the earth, uh, uh, and the sight thereof was to the end of all the earth. So you can see it all over the world. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof was much, and in it was much meat for all. Okay, this does not mean that there was meat fruit, okay? This is a <laughs> old translation that talks about good, wholesome food being meat. So I don't think it's like, mmm, hot dog fruit. I think it, was, it was good fruit. Hot food. dog fruit. <laughs> And the beast of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the branches thereof, and all the flesh was fed of it. Let me go to the next page. Oh, well, let's just draw that. Let's just draw that. That's a lot of stuff to draw, right? All right, all right. Okay. All right, so there and there. We're gonna draw a tree. Very easy thing to do. If you make it a perfect circle, it looks fake like a lollipop. So if you make it look like a terrible cloud, but green, it'll look realistic. And then I like to have, well, maybe you shouldn't do this. So you can have a, a branch, you know, branch and a branch connected to those branches like that and then the trunk it seems like if you do that all of a sudden the tree looks believable all right and the tree is on the ground right and you can see it all over the earth i don't know how i don't have space to draw the whole earth but there you go all right so there's a tree and it's huge <coughs> and the leaves I thought it was interesting. He even talks about how nice the leaves are. The leaves, the leaves were fair. So it's, it's beautiful and strong. It has fair leaves and the fruit, there's a lot of fruit. And so you can have, there was purple round fruit and purple cube shaped fruit. <laughs> and there was a chicken drumstick fruit. <laughs> I mean, I said that it wasn't meat, but that just gave me the idea to draw really funny fruit. And there's also cherries and apples that look like hearts. Okay, so there it is. And it's full of wondrous fruit, okay? Uh, and the fruit is meat for everybody. And the beasts of the field had shadow under it. Now, this is a time that you can make the tree look really big. If you put un underneath if you put underneath the tree, if you put animals and they look small. So if you draw a giraffe like this, all of a sudden you made this tree look gigantic because if the giraffe is only this big, and they have like the lollipops on top of their heads too, so you gotta do that. So if that's how big the giraffe is, this is a huge tree. And you can draw a hippo because hippos are fun. I haven't drawn a hippo in a long while, which is basically just draw a big stumpy things with fat rolls on them and those smile. All right, so there's your hippo. All right, and so the animals, they, they are in the shade underneath it. And it's not just shade, but the idea of shade is they're protected. They're underneath this great tree. Um, they're in the shadow and, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the branches. So you gotta draw some, some birds in it so you can draw, um, birds sitting up here, little tweety birds, and um, you can draw another one over here, and um, 
like that. So you got birds and they're up in, oh, maybe, maybe they have legs too. Otherwise, how would they be sitting? All right. And the birds are up in it and all, and they're all eat. Everything is eaten from the purple cubes and the blue chicken bones. So this is his dream. This is his dream. Kind of a normal dream, right? Maybe not. I haven't ever had dreams, that dream. Dreams can be kind of odd, definitely. Yeah. Usually dreams aren't normal. Yeah. Good thing, huh? What if they were normal? It'd be no fun to go to sleep. <laughs> I think it's so much fun to go to sleep. All right, so now we keep reading. Also, it would be hard to tell what you were dreaming. Mm, true. I saw in the visions of my head and upon my bed, and behold, and this is, this is kind of interesting, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. Now this is old fashioned language. So I think this is one person. He is a watcher and a holy one. I don't think it is first a watcher and then a holy one came down from heaven. I think somebody comes down from heaven. Oh, we better draw that. So there's heaven. I better write heaven because otherwise it's gonna look like leaves on the tree. So down from heaven comes this watching holy one. And he's got legs and here he comes with his hands. He comes down from heaven and he cries aloud. What does that sound like? Somebody from heaven crying aloud. All of a sudden we're back in the book of Revelation, aren't we? <laughs> he's crying aloud. And said thus, cut down the tree and cut off its branches, shake off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from its branches. Oh my goodness. Wait, we just drew a really pretty tree. What does this guy want us to do? <laughs> Ruin the drawing. Throw it all away. Nevertheless, leave the stump and his roots in the earth even with a band of iron and brass and in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion, wait, 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 wait. Here it says, let it be wet with dew from heaven. What's he talking about? Cut down the tree, leave a stump and let it be wet with dew and let his portion be with the field uh with the beasts of the grass and the earth and let his heart be changed from a man's to a beast's heart be given to him and let seven times pass over him the sentence is by the decree of the watchers and the demand of the word of the holy ones to the extent that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he will and sets it up over it who um, and sets up over it the lowest of men okay so what we have here is i don't know if it's an angel but it sure sounds like an angel to me right sounds like the angels who would come down uh in the book of revelation and they would have this pronouncement and remember how the angels would come down and say hold back the winds or don't hold back the winds or grab this or don't grab that and do all those kinds of things well, what we have here is, hold on, hold on. What we have here is this interesting story where the guy is saying, um, cut down this tree. But we just, but I just drew a pretty tree. I don't want to cut it down. <laughs> cut down the tree. Well, I might, I might not erase the whole tree because we might, well, maybe I will. I think I'll just erase the whole tree. That's probably what I'll do. We'll see. Um, no, let's see. I'll draw it here. I'll draw it here. How does that sound? Cut down the tree. All right. So the way to draw a stump, that's fun. You draw a circle and then you do a little spiral in, and then it looks like the, the, the things, uh, the, the rings from the tree, right? And then you got to draw some roots coming out. All right. Mr. Dan. Mm-hmm. Oh. I don't think your screen can. 
See what I mean? I forgot. Don't you just want to look, look at my head while I draw? My head is so beautiful. <laughs> oh, Mr. Dane, your head is the prettiest head I ever did done see. I don't care about your drawing. <laughs> I don't want to see your pictures. I just want to see your noodle. All right. <laughs> so here is the stump. See, you just draw a little spiral. And then you draw the root lines coming out of it. I think stumps are fun to draw. And then you can draw the the, the tree that fell down <laughs> this way. It looks like a cinnamon roll. It looks like a cinnamon roll. All right. And so then there's the branches coming up, right? And there's the tree. Oh, I even have green. I think I, I need to zoom out. Good gravy. I'm focusing too much. There we go. So we got the green leaves. And it's got to do that. So there's the green tree, and you, you cut it down, and um, there's the trunky stuff. Trunky stuff is not the scientific term for it, but you get the idea. So cut it down. Cut that sucker down. And um, it goes from saying, cut it down, and I'll even use yellow to show this. Uh, maybe I'll use blue. I'll do blue. First, he says, cut it down. And then it talks about some sort of his heart and a him. What happens there? What's going on? The angel was talking about it, and then he's talking about a him. Hey, I think. You know, I think. What? I, I think that the tree represents someone. The tree I represents think, someone. I think exactly. The tree represents um. Nebuchadnezzar. Yep, you guys figured it out. Guess who couldn't figure it out? Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar and all of his. Oh, I, I gave him kind of a happy face. I need to give him a little bit. Yeah, I'll give him a little bit of open mouth. Nebuchadnezzar couldn't understand it. None of his smarty dudes could understand it. Hmm. What? But what? I can. Yep. Good old seven-year-old girls. That's what makes the world go round. <laughs> All right. So the angel is saying, again, I think it's an angel, right? The angel saying, cut down this tree and let his heart, mm, we'll put a heart in his beard. I don't think that's where hearts actually go, but you get this idea. Let his heart be changed from a man's heart to a beast's heart. And I don't know, like this is a man's heart and then maybe a beast's heart looks like that i don't know with like a weird mouth i don't know let's just say that that's what's going to happen i don't i don't know what that means from a man's heart to a beast's heart but you know we do this in stories like in the story of the grinch how his heart was two sizes too small and then heart grew big and that's representing how somebody feels how somebody is on the inside right and so the angel is saying cut down that tree and make his heart like the heart of a beast. What do you think it'd be like to have the heart of a beast? It'd be wild. Crazy? I think that's the point. Would you sit down to dinner with um, a fork and knife and a napkin? No. no, you're a beast. You'd stick your face in the slop and you'd slop it up. I think that that's the idea. All right, so we're going to look at this part of the sentence, all right? Um, let his portion be with the beasts of the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from a man's heart to a beast's heart to be given unto him. And let seven times pass over him. How long is seven times, do you think? My Bible has seven. a footnote that says seven years. Yep. Some people think it's years. It could be days, but I don't think it's going to be days. Months. You know, like seven moons? I don't know. I don't think it's days because it's going to turn out that um, what this, there's other parts in the story. I just spelled months wrong. I spelled montish. You get the idea. <laughs> um, that I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be longer than days. But, you know, it's, it's seven times are going to pass. Um, and let, now here's where it gets kind of powerful. Where we understand that this is a big sentence from God, okay? The sentence is by the decree of the watchers, and these watchers, I think that's like the angel guys, right? And by the demand of the word of the holy ones, okay, more of those angel guys, to the intent that, okay, oh, this is the intent. This is the purpose. Um, 
what are we listening to this for? What's the point of this? He's about to tell us what is the intent. What is the purpose? Okay, are you ready? The living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he will and sets up over it the lowest of men. So what is the point? The angel says, this is the point. If an angel says, this is the point, then you know what the point is. What's the point? Make sure the glory is given and kept with God. Yes. And why do we need to keep the glory with God? Because he deserves it. And why does he deserve it? Because, well, he rules. And that, lady, you're exactly right. You're talking about how we need to glorify God, but that's almost like the next step. And before Nebuchadnezzar can learn that step, he has to learn this step. Step number one, God rules. Well, where does God rule? In the kingdom of men, even in your kingdom, Nebuchadnezzar. That's the lesson he needs to learn. God rules even in your kingdom, he gives rule to whoever he wants, even he gives it to you, and he sets up over it even the lowest of men. I can make you low or I can make you high. So really, step one is God rules. And Layla, you're exactly right. So step two means glorify God. right? Sometimes it's good to know why we should glorify God. And the reason we need to glorify God is, well, God rules. He's the ruler. Okay. Let's see. I'll, I'll keep reading a little bit. We're, we're just about at our stopping point. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen, and you, Belteshazzar, declare its interpretation, for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation. But you are able for the spirit of the holy gods is in you. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, see how the, it keeps playing with the names, right? Isn't that interesting? Which name is going to win is almost the way the story is going. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for a while, and his thoughts troubled him. Did he like the dream? No. No. The king answered and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or its interpretation trouble you. King Nebuchadnezzar is trying to help Daniel because Daniel really doesn't like the dream. Daniel knows what it's about. And King Nebuchadnezzar is trying to be a nice guy. Oh, Daniel, it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry, Daniel. But Daniel knows, doesn't he? I think that that's kind of sweet that King Nebuchadnezzar is trying to be helpful to Daniel. And so for some reason, his beard got on the other side of his body, but that's okay. <laughs> Belteshazzar answered and said, My Lord, the dream be unto them that hate you and the interpretation thereof to your adversaries. Daniel says, essentially he says, I wish this dream was for your enemies. The dream is so bad, I wish your enemies got this dream. Whoa. Uh -oh. Whoa. <laughs> and that's where we're going to stop. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but... We'll get to the interpretation. Honestly, you guys have already been interpreting it. You're getting the big point of it, right? Okay. Do you guys have any questions about what we talked about today then? No. No? I don't think so. Cool. All right. Well, I will let you go, and we will finish out this chapter uh, next time. But one thing to always remember when we're thinking about this chapter, remember, who wrote it? Who wrote it? Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. And who is it about? Most high God, really. Nebuchadnezzar 
a foreign man, a foreign king, is writing about Most High God. This is a special moment in the Bible. And with his own hands. Yeah? Like, I'm just, I'm just saying with his own hands, you know, as well. What does what? With his own hand as well. Yeah, he wrote it with his own hand. I think that's just so Can exciting. I show my picture? Uh, maybe in a little bit. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go. And I will see y'all soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye.